Hello, this is Mark from ExcelOffTheGrid.com and in this video we're looking at how we can create a list of all possible combinations in Excel by using Power Query. If you want to work along with this video you can download the example file and there are links in the descriptions box below. So once you've done that, if you're ready, let's get started. Before we go any further, I would just like to remind you to subscribe and get notifications so that you don't miss any future videos. Let's imagine a scenario where you have two or more lists in Excel and you want to create a single table which shows all the possible combinations, such as how can I get a complete list of all the possible general ledger and cost center combinations? Or how can I get a complete list of all the possible sizes and color combinations possible for a certain product? It sounds simple, right? There must be a simple function in Excel or Power Query that would generate that for us, right? Actually, no. Instead, we need to get a little more involved. So let's see how we can use Power Query to solve this problem for us. In this video, I'm going to present two possible solutions, and they each teach us different things about Power Query. So even after watching the first solution, if that solves your problem, it's still worth watching to see how the second solution works because that might be better for your scenario. So here on the screen, we have three tables. We have the product table, the size table, and the color table. And our goal is to try and get one table that contains all the possible combinations of these three tables. So let's start by loading these tables into Power Query. I'll select any cell within the first table and then I'll click data from table slash range. That will load the Power Query editor and as you can see our products table is now there in the preview window. In this example all of my tables contain unique records but for you they might not. So if that's the case you can right click on the column header and then down there you can see remove duplicates. But for me, as I said, I know my records are all unique. So now I just need to load this table as a connection into Power Query. So I'll go to close and load from the home menu, close and load to, and I'm gonna select only create a connection, and then click OK. On the right there in the queries and connections pane, we can see that the products table has now been loaded. If your queries and connections pane isn't visible, you can go up to data and then click queries and connections. Okay, let's do the same again, but with the size table. So I'll select a cell from table slash range. And then once again, I'll close and load that too. And only create a connection. And then finally the color table, same again, select a cell from table slash range, close and load, close and load to, only create connection, okay. Now that we've got our data loaded into Power Query, we can now look at solution number one as to how we solve this problem. So I'm going to launch Power Query again. I could either click on one of the items in the queries and connections pane, or instead I could go to data, get data, and then go down to Launch Power Query Editor. This first solution works by merging tables together. And for this, we need a common key which is used across all of our tables. So to add that in, I'm gonna start by clicking on the product table and then adding a column. So add column, custom column. Here the custom column dialog box opens up and I'm going to call my column temp and I'm going to ask that the column temp has a value of one. It doesn't matter what we call our column or what value we give it, as long as that is consistent across all three tables. So I'll click OK to accept that. And there we have our temp column with a value of one in each row. Let me repeat that for the other tables. So I'll click size then add column, custom column, call it temp, give it a value of one, and then click OK. And finally, the same for the color table, custom column, called temp, 
the value of one. Okay, our preparation stage is now complete and we can start merging these tables together. So I'll click home and then merge queries on the drop down. I'll select merge queries as new. And let's say the first table I want is the products table and the second table is the size table. I need to click on each of my unique columns so that they're both selected. And then from the join kind, I want full outer, all rows from both. So this means that that first item budget will get merged with small, medium and large sizes. And the second product of standard will also get merged with small, medium and large, and so will premium. So those three sizes will exist for each of our three products. And that's because we've used the full outer join. I'll click OK on that. So in there, all we see at the moment is that it says table. If we were to click on that, that would then show me that that budget line has a table which contains the three sizes. So let's go back, I'll delete the navigation step. Okay, and now let's merge our color table into our merged table. So I'll go back up to merge queries, and I'll click merge queries. Here we already have our merge one in the top section, and then in the bottom section, we want to include the color table. Again, we need to select our common keys. So the temp column in both tables and full outer join as the join kind. And I'll click OK on that. Next, we expand the tables in each of those columns. So we click on the expand button and it'll bring this drop down. Now we don't need the temp number, so I'll uncheck that to just leave the size. And we also don't need the use original column name as prefix. So I will uncheck that as well and then click OK. So as you can see, there now exists a small, a medium and a large for each of our product types. Let's do the same again with color. So I'll expand the column. I'll deselect temp and the use original column name as prefix is already unchecked. And then I can click OK. So the color column has expanded and we now have all the possible combinations from those three tables. Let's just tidy this up. I don't need the temp column. So I can click that and press the delete key. I'll just rename size one to size. I'll rename color. And that's it. And now we're ready to load that back into Excel. So I'll click on the drop down, close and load two. And I can select a new worksheet for this one and as a table. So I'll click OK. There we go, we now have our table in Excel, which is the list of all the possible combinations of those three tables. Now let's move on to method number two. This is an easier way to achieve the same result, but it's probably less obvious unless you've got more experience of working with tables within Power Query. So we're going to start this example again what I have done is already loaded the product, size and color tables into Power Query as connections already. Then I want to start with a blank query. So to do that, in the data ribbon, I can select get data from other sources and then select blank query. Here on my window, I have the formula bar open. If you haven't got it open, go to the view ribbon and then select formula bar. Now within my queries, I have my three tables already loaded. So in the formula bar, I'm just going to type equals product. Now product is the table that I have listed there on the left. So I've got that and then I'll press return. So that then pulls the product table into my current query. Next, I'm going to add a new custom column. So add column across to custom column. And this one I'm going to call size. And size is going to be equal to the table that I've loaded called size. 
I'll click OK on that. And just as before, size has been loaded as a table in itself. So let's repeat that for color. Add column, custom column, we'll call it color. And again, that value is equal to the table color. So now that both of those have been loaded, we can expand our columns as we did before. So I'll expand the size. We don't want the original name as a prefix and then click OK and do the same with color. Let's just tidy up our names. So size, and color. And for completeness, we'll just tidy up our data types as well. So that is text, that is color. And then we're done. We can now close and load that back into Excel. Uh, we'll go for a table and a new worksheet. And then I'll click OK. Well, there we have it. That's it. We now have our table of all the possible combinations of three other tables. It might not be as simple as we wanted, but hopefully in this video you've seen that we can achieve it with just a few simple steps. Now before we go, there's one warning I want to give you. We used three tables, each containing three items. And from that, we created 27 rows. Now imagine if your tables included hundreds or thousands of rows. Ultimately, it's simple multiplication. If we had a thousand rows, and we wanted to see the possible combinations with another thousand rows, we would end up with a million rows. So this thing can grow quite quickly. Well, that's it from me today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment, and I'll catch you next time. <music>